And now, it's the other news. And here's your host, OK Bakasi. All right, welcome, beautiful people, to another episode of The Other News. If the news is a grumpy old man, the other news is the lagbaja that says, show me your tattoo. <laughs> uh, my, my guest today is a young woman who is doing amazing things in the world of design and graphics, and is intent on dragging other women with her to the promised land. Bolale Bangwe is in the building, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause. Also on the show, our special correspondent, Dan the Humorous, will be checking in on an issue that has been uh, bugging our minds this week. But first is the other news headline report with Binta Badmus. Welcome to Headline Report. It seems Nigeria was not among the countries that was reportedly referred to as a shithole country some months ago by US President Donald Trump. Well, I would like to visit Nigeria. I'd like very much to visit Nigeria. It's, uh, it's an amazing country, and in, in certain ways, I hear from the standpoint of the beauty of a country, there's no country more beautiful. Thank goodness. Now, anytime anybody says anything bad about Nigeria, I will remind them that Nigeria is. It's an amazing country, and in, in certain ways, I hear from the standpoint of the beauty of a country, there's no country more beautiful. And if President Trump said it, then it's true. Because we all know that President Trump does not tell lies. <laughs> Wife of Nigerian President Aisha Buhari got Nigerian ladies going, oh, relationship girls, when she tweeted this during the president's trip to the Washington, D.C. Eh? Auntie Aisha is a fan of Igwe Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the next time she tweets, she won't tell her haters to shove up there, <laughs> as we all know. <laughs> Buhari and Aisha, our relationship goes. The other room. Mr. President, that's too much information. We don't need to know that. A new report by Reuters says that a faction of Boko Haram is imposing taxes on traders, drivers, headers, and everyone captured in towns in Yobe and Borono states. Hey, as a matter of fact, Boko Haram seems to be so good at collecting taxes that the federal government might consider letting them run the FIRS. <laughs> now imagine Boko Haram as the government's tax collector. Hmm. Their motto will read, to evade tax is suicide, trust us. I know a lot about suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Bio University Vice Chancellor Professor Yahuza Bello has urged Nigerian students to promote folklore through social media. Don't worry, Professor. Uh -huh. Our politicians are already promoting folk tales like the genie and the cap full of dollars. <laughs> The house of looted treasures. The queen and her magical reigns. <laughs> Not forgetting Aki, Popo, and the rivers of oil. <laughs> Nigerian workers hmm, use this year's May Day celebration to demand an increase in their minimum wage from 18,000 to 66,500 naira. On another fear. A Kitty State Governor responded with this tweet. Ah, governor, stomach structure, governor. You try. You are, you are far too kind. My fellow Nigerian workers, how many years art thou? If you don't work, you will die of hunger. Even if you try to walk, you might die of hunger. <laughs> but don't forget, hunger is never tired of walking. <laughs> Veteran Hollywood actor Ramsey Noah says someone has been impersonating him 
and misleading all suspecting members of the public. I knew it. It is this guy, she. Oh, I just kidding, nah. No vex. I don't need your apology. Sorry, oh. My mouth is very hard working. It's not my fault. <laughs> I'm passing through the keep quiet. That's the headline report for this week. Uncle Oke, over to you. Uh, thank you, Binta. Um, and now to other matters. For many years, the people of Nigeria have been crying about their sufferings. When we came here, we asked for the leadership. Who is in charge of this operation where they have stopped us? And everybody has refused to take responsibility. Eventual sea rise in your vehicle, you are in trouble. One bag of rice for you, for you and your family to come through. We stand to oppose and to tell the world yes. that this government was, must rise up the, to its responsibility yes. and ensure that the culprits are arrested. Yes. And for many years, the people whose job it is to lead us away from suffer ahead and into prosperity have been responding to our cries by buying soundproof cars so they will not hear us and using sirens to drown out our cries. They have been moving further and further away from us so they will not see our suffering. In fact, some of our leaders have moved so far from us that they and their families literally now live abroad. The gap between the leaders and the led has gotten so bad that a few times when they actually hear our complaint, it sounds like a different language in their ears. But a few things have happened recently that have made the elite stop and think about the situation that Nigerians are in. In other words, the hand we don't they knock us since the head don't they flog them too. <laughs> yeah, first it was the judges who were raided by law enforcement. The judiciary finally got a taste of the heavy-handedness of security agencies. The judges went from being called Melod to shouting, Jesus is Lord! Recently, another arm of government got a taste of the insecurity we all face in this country when violent, nameless people can walk into your community. They say the armed robbers, numbering about 30, raided the five banks without hindrance, breaking through all the security doors with explosives. Take your prized possessions. Do you harm? About 756 people were killed by Fulani headsmen in two years. And walk away leaving you helpless. The abduction of students at the Government Girls Science and Technical College in Dapchi, Yobe State, is the latest onslaught by suspected Boko Haram terrorists in Nigeria's northeast. So, some nameless people walked into the Senate, took the maze, did some harm to senators and staff, and walked away leaving our honorable senators feeling angry and helpless. At least in their own case, the Commissioner of Police of the Federal Capital Territory was on the scene in record time. When some of us are in danger from armed robbers or herdsmen, the police response is either, hello, you want to report an armed robbery? Okay, wrong number, please. Or, <laughs> for no day. Or, have you prayed about your situation? <laughs> well, right now, Nigeria is like a police van heading to an uncertain location. That is looking more like, I'm more like a local <laughs> Yeah, because things are going local and many decided to ja. <laughs> yes, some have jumped out of the constantly swerving police van that is our country and landed Yakata on the ground. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, that ground is the Mediterranean Sea. It is the Libyan desert. It is the wheel compartment of an airline. Nigerians are so desperate to get out that they are risking their lives to do so. Our leaders should be worried. But well, how will they be worried? They themselves jumped out long ago. And of the Nigerians who make it out, a few are lucky to end up abroad, which is kind of like ending up in hospital after jumping down from the moving police van. <laughs> and if they are unlucky, they get picked up and sent back to continue their journey on the police van that is heading to an uncertain future. 
It is time for the people and leaders of this country to come together to chart a clearer course for Nigeria. Let people be struggling to get in rather than to get out as Nigeria heads towards prosperity. We can do it. We can do it. <laughs>guest tonight is a leading computer graphics designer and the founder of the female design movement. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Bola Lebanwo. Please, a round of applause for her. Yeah. Yeah, good to have you on the show. Thank you, sir. You know, when we say design, I'm sure most people think about clothes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially those who, who are not... Uh, uh, computer savvy. Now, tell us, you studied um, mass communications, mm -hmm. and um, when did this relationship with computer graphic design start, and how did it start? I would say that everything started when I picked up a pencil and paper. Okay. Everything I, I would think about, um, illustrating, drawing, and drawing characters, making people laugh, that was everything that brought me joy. I what just, was your favorite character to draw at the time? Everything, Tom and Jerry, Tom. Okay, cool. <laughs> just because <laughs> I started drawing at, at a very, very young age. Yeah. And that was what really brought me joy. I knew that, okay, I needed to do this. Okay. So even though I studied MassCom, yeah. I would draw for my school um, newspaper. I would mm -hmm. draw their cartoons. I would draw for my school fellowship. Nice. And it brought me, I was, I was just doing everything. everything just playing with your I was just doing pencil everything. on top of paper. Exactly. Then at some point, it. you said, well, let me take... Let's, let's go computer. Yes, I was yeah. like, mm. I'm taking this to the next level. I'm, okay. I want to start illustrating on computer. I want to start illustrating using um, computer software and learning to use them as well. So I started learning and then okay. I started illustrating via the computer. So you, you had to go back to school or you self-trained yourself to, to use all these computer software? No, I'm self-taught. Self-taught? Self -taught. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Now... Um, here you are, an accomplished uh, computer graphics designer, doing all these wonderful things on computer. At some point, you decided, I'm going to start something, the female designer movement. movement. That's what you call it. What is this female designer movement about? Over the years, yeah. I realized that we have, um, you'd walk into any organization, maybe a tech industry, yeah. and then you find more men designing, more yeah. men building um, building. Um, different um, building things and yeah. doing things and I told myself I wanted to see more women design yeah. I wanted to see more women take up design positions and you know do things and so I um, that, that, that was what brought about the female designer movement um, the <laughs> that's, 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 that's that's good I, mm. I, I tell people that women are born with this natural instinct to design. You yes, know, you pick yes. up your. I agree with that. Yeah, you I you you'd see. Um, you pick up your chair. You want to place it in a particular place. You want to make it look. Not perfect. even that. You start in the middle <laughs> and you begin to design your face. Exactly. That is what you are. <laughs> so you don't even go too far. And then you know the amazing part. We're able to combine the, the, our colors well naturally. Yeah. You just know how to do it. No, I think the average woman is a good artist. Seeing what you guys do in front of the mirror, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just saying. You know, you the know, eye pencil. The eye pencil <laughs> and, you know, somebody just sits there in front of the mirror and before you know it, they are transformed totally. Exactly. So, I mean, if you can do it to yourself, why can't you do it on paper or exactly. on the computer? And that was exactly what I was trying to bring out. I wanted to see, I wanted to encourage women to design, to see how easy it is. Like, all you're just going to learn is learn how to use the software. Apart from that, your creativity is what matters. Okay, fantastic. Um, you, you, you've, you started this movement. Mm -hmm. What has the response been so far? Have women, I mean, your primary target, have they embraced it? Are they excited about the prospect of being uh, computer graphics designers? Or have they said, you know what, uh, be doing your graphics designing, let us be doing our makeup. <laughs> you know, what, what has been the response so far? So what I did first was to put out a, um, a form. Yeah. My plan was to train um, about maybe 10 to 15 women. Okay. And then the next thing, my, my mailbox was full. Wow. We had over 250 women register. Like, they were 
asking questions. So the I response has been good. Very, very good. They're asking questions. They really wanted to be a part of it. Yeah. yeah. Especially considering the level of unemployment these days, people mm -hmm. are willing to try their hands anyway. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, you made your mark so quickly mm -hmm. in a, an industry that is male dominated. Mm -hmm. What has how have you tried to assert yourself? What, I mean, seeing that all these men will not roll over and die. They want to compete. <laughs> how have you been able to compete? <laughs> So I'm going, to, I'm going to answer that question yeah. with a story. Okay. So there was this day I posted, okay, um, I designed for a client mm -hmm. and then they posted the design online. So sometimes I go around just checking um, the different um, social media platforms to see what the design, what people are saying about the design. And then people are writing, oh, this guy is a bad guy. I was like, oh. Seriously? I'm, I'm not a guy. <laughs> I know. And they are giving guys credit exactly. for the job I, that... Uh, even because it was actually very unprofessional for me to write anything there, but I felt yeah. so bad. Like, yeah. women can yeah, actually give design. A woman exactly. credit, man. It's a woman's job. Mm -hmm. And you, did, you were not tempted to make a comment on the I was, to I, say, was, I was tempted. I was really tempted. But you didn't. I didn't. Are you that, strong, it's, not, it's not professional. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of us would have said something. Yes, now. Like, you know? why? So, um, people, people meet you for the first time. People yeah. meet me and they're like, oh, what do you do? I'm a designer. Oh, fashion designer. No, 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 not a fashion designer. I'm a graphic designer. You know, people just automatically assume and that, that's just it. Yes, you've been helping small and medium uh, scale companies create smart impressions and build strong identities. Uh, that, that's what you've been doing. And, and looking at our country, it, it, it appears to me that this country needs strong identity and smart impression, you know. If you were given the contract to rebrand this country, I mean, as an illustrator and a designer, what would, what would be your suggestion? What's the way out? I would um, start with the people. Okay. Because we need to understand that design is actually way beyond just what we can see. Okay. Design is actually attitude as well. Okay. I'll start with the people changing their perception, changing their orientation. Now, do you know that when a man walks into a room, Whatever people perceive of him is his brand identity. Yeah. So the way people think, the way they, um, the way they handle things, is what we need to change first. Okay. When that is sorted out, then we can now. Is start it we the people or the, these other people <laughs> who are who are in charge of us? <laughs> <laughs> Because I think it goes both you know, ways. Really. In both ways, right? Both ways, yeah. Because we the people, I think we are willing to change, but them the people who are in charge, that is the biggest <laughs> problem. That, that we have, I think their unwillingness to make adjustments is what is, um, you know, creating problems for us. Yeah. Now, okay, um, your, your, this is your dream of trying to bring more women into what we are doing. Uh, I want to believe, is it women generally or your generation? Because you're, you're, you're a very young woman. I mean, uh, I, I can't imagine... <laughs> I can't imagine my mom now trying to do graphics design and, uh, <laughs> when she can't even use it's a computer. A bad idea. Well, it's when she can't even use a computer. So I want to believe you target your generation, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and most of them uh, live in cyberspace these days, mm -hmm. social media and all that. You know, how do we use the tools that somebody like you have been able to master? You know, to begin to you know, galvanize your generation to be more active politically. Because I like to talk politics, especially with young people. You guys tend to shy away from it. You know, and politics is around the corner. So using the tools of your trade, how are we going to convince your generation to be more active? I would say that everything has a ripple effect. Yeah. So I may not be able to change the generation coming after me, but mm. if we can impact this generation yeah. to do what they're supposed to do, yeah. we can actually impact the next because it's just going to keep going and going and going. <laughs> the government has set aside about three billion naira that will benefit the tech industry. Mm. All right. And for somebody like you who is in the tech industry, are, are there plans to tap into this uh, uh, funding and you know take your business or your craft to the next level? And if the answer is yes, what are those plans? So in, the, in our last event, yeah. we were able to teach just about um, 100 to 150 women. Yeah. So imagine what we can do with um, funding. Imagine what we can do when we have enough resources to do so much. So my plan is once we get the government to support the movement, yeah. we can train more women, go to secondary schools, have girls design, you know, cut them young and mm -hmm. do so much. So it is going to affect 
It's going to affect the whole system. Yeah, I, very I, 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 I've seen how passionate you are about women, women empowerment, technology, and all that. If your state governor, who probably is watching this show today, says, come and be my special advisor on women empowerment, would you accept the offer? Yes, I will. Thank you very much. At least she's not saying a little point. It was a nice talking <laughs> to you. Thank you very much. Coming up on the other news, our correspondent, Dan the Humorous, reveals to us the thing that has been hiding in his beer beer. It's the other news. And now over to our special correspondent, Dan the Humorous, as he brings us this report. Over to you, Dan. Today's segment, we will be looking critically at President Buhari's visit to the White House. The first sub-Saharan African president to visit President Trump since he became president of the United States. Now, this visit is indeed a very special one. I'll tell you how. These two presidents are both in their 70s, married to beautiful women in their 40s, with beautiful daughters that I personally used to crush on until they both crushed me by marrying sons of billionaires. <laughs> Not only are these similar in, with these two men, these two men have also been dealt serious blows from life, from three failed elections to several bankruptcies as equal as the number of alphabets in the world bankruptcy. <laughs> these two men have also seen pepper in the hands of their wives, not just on national TV, but on global TV. Nigeria's first lady, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, has warned the president that she will not support him at the next election unless he rejigs his cabinet. <laughs> uh, first ladies of nowadays, <laughs> they are not taking it easy at all. I want to remind Nigerians that President Trump actually made a comment a few months ago about African nations being a <whistles> uh -huh, you know what I'm saying. So when we heard that President Buhari was going to visit President Trump, we were like, uh -huh, very good, go and tell him something. What kind of thing is that? So when we saw Buhari on that day, stepping out of the vehicle, you know, tower, you know his height, towering heavily and moving into the white house, say, come on, come on, Sai Baba, tell him something. Tell him something. We are very grateful to the United States. <laughs> calm down, calm down, calm down. We are even more grateful for the physical uh, presence of the United States. Now, president is using what's called old man's hands. You understand? So he didn't want, he let it be that the thing was coming from him. You understand? Let it be that somebody said it and then he reacted. And the opportunity came. Um, did you address his reported comments from earlier this year when he reportedly used vulgar language to describe uh, African nations? Well, um, I'm very careful with what uh, the press says about others and myself. Um, I'm not sure about, uh, uh, you know, the validity or whether that uh, allegation against the president was true or not. So the best thing for me is to keep quiet. <laughs> Baba. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, that feat was greatly appreciated by President Trump, who even gave him thumbs up for the work he has been doing, but said something that actually can shock me. We didn't discuss it because the president knows me, and he knows where I'm coming from. How can you say that President Buhari knows where you're coming from? Because where President Trump is coming from, from places like wrestling, from places like Miss Universe, especially Miss Universe, <laughs> is not where our own president is coming from. Even MBGN, he's not even coming from there. So please, Mr. Trump, on a no walk at the same road. The next issue was the much talked about Tucano aircraft that has been peppering the body of the National Assembly. We love helicopters. <laughs> he likes them more than I do. <laughs> This now makes perfect sense. No wonder one of the very first things this administration did was the construction of helipad in Daura. Ah, our president has taste, man. He's a sophisticated guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, nobody could pick anything to use and cause any social media stare against our president. However, this picture actually got us worried. 
Because first of all, it is very unusual to see President Trump smiling like this. Look, that smile was just not this official grin that he does. This. Mm -mm. That smile was coming from his heart, from deep within. He don't tell we see President Trump smile that kind. Not even on November 8th victory did he smile this kind of smile. The last time we saw somebody smiling this kind of smile was when Dili was signing Ron Town's contract. And now Ron Town has run out of town. <laughs> President Buhari, I hope it was visitors register. You were signing me. Please. Please. But in the success of this trip to the United States, Mr. President Mohammed Buhari sure deserves a lot of accolades. He really has paid his dues in full. We acknowledge. But Mr. President, we have gone past the level of accolades. We want assurances. Please, look at us as your chairman and be a Davido to us. Yeah, that is really what they call a wahoo. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. And that's it for today, people. It's always an absolute pleasure taking you through this newsy joy ride. Uh, be sure to follow us at The Other News CTV on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You can also be a part of our amazing live studio audience by calling any of the numbers on your screen. Our people will say that the monkey or monkey that eats grass instead of banana is a good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, till next time, my name is Okie. Okay.